put down this president. Oh. We are ready. We are here. We've got Ed DeRosa, Horse Racing Nation. We've got Dan Cronin, Fat Ball Guy Racing, Keeneland Dan. We got me, John Stetton, Pass the Wire. It's never too early to talk Breeders' Cup Classic. We talked earlier about the Kentucky Derby. We had some fun. Uh, we talked about a couple of other races, but we're here to talk about the Breeders' Cup Classic, which is about three weeks away. Uh, in my opinion, I don't know if you guys will agree, it's a very exciting Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, I'd like to start with an interesting, or at least I think interesting observation that I have found, and I rely on Ed to kind of kind of stat me right in the in 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 these ways because he's the statistician of the group for sure. Um, but it seems to me, Ed, that. Uh, after Arabian Night won the Pacific Classic, Baffert said he was going in fresh, not going to run in the awesome again. Uh, Rick Dutro, White of Barrio, won the Whitney. He said, you know what? I ain't prepping. I'm heading out. I'm packing my bags, heading out west. He's been out west before anybody else. Uh, the Travers, a couple of weeks later, Jenna Antonucci wins with Artangelo. A week or so ago, she, two weeks, whatever it was, she got out. Seems to me a lot of horses are going into the Classic this year fresh as opposed to years past. So do we have a little trend of that this year? Do you? Um, am I on target on that? Because I, I think that the, the volume of the number of horses who are coming in this fresh is definitely uh, beyond what I remember. And I am going to run the numbers uh, once we lose a few of these horses. I have 18 right now possible. So once we get down to what we know the field will be, I'll look. But, you know, in, in Vassour back in, what was that, 06? Uh, he yeah. hadn't run since the Whitney, so there's some precedence that far back. Of course, Flightline just last year came out right. of the Pacific Classic. American Pharaoh, when he hit the Grand Slam, was the Travers. So these superstar type horses have done it. But well, I go rock and ride, go rock and ride. Another one didn't go rock and ride. Didn't win the Pacific Classic. He's another one to He's, suck. Yeah, well, and, and Bright Future hasn't run right. since the Jockey Club Gold Cup. So we, I think we've seen that, you know, these huge name horses have done it. This is a year where basically half the field, if not more, is going to be off uh, since the Pacific Classic or earlier. So it's a new challenge for sure. And the other thing I would add that's fresh for the Classic this year and, and the turf to a lesser extent, it's in the middle of the card. So all these years where the pick five, pick four, pick three have all ended on the Classic, now you're going to have three pick threes, probably two pick fours, two pick fives. The pick six is going to be in the middle. Uh, to me, that's a huge difference in how to approach this Breeders' Cup. And I know a lot of people say, why are you handicapping a race three weeks out? Well, that's my answer. That's why. Uh, I want to be armed and ready to tackle all these multi-race wagers going through the Classic this year. And this video, to me, is, is the starting point. Why are they doing that? Anybody know why they would do this? I would think TV. TV. Yeah, TV. I would think TV. I, I, you know, I, I voiced some displeasure with that um, and silly. disappointment in that. Uh, you know, I like the classic being the last race. And all the feedback I got was negative. It was like, oh, what's the difference? What's the difference? What, to me, there is a difference. And I yeah, like I agree with you, Jonathan. Um, yeah. But I, I don't, I'll tell you I don't mind what the Derby does. If uh -huh. they want to put two allowance races behind it, right, or a maiden race, so the traffic can clear, I, I get oh. that. And out in California, with you know the the time change, they have time to run races after and have run like the Oak Tree Derby stuff like that. Totally get it. But I think that Keeneland not I ending on the classic. Didn't that Keeneland? They do it last year at Keeneland. I think they ran a race or two. Why? Well, I think Wakanawa won a race after. After yeah. the Breeders Cup, and, yeah, it and, might have been on Friday. It might not have been Saturday. It might have been on. Friday. I'm not sure. I think we all agree the Breeders Cup race is that it should be the last Breeders Cup race. Period. Yeah. There's there's no reason to not be the last. Now, before we get to the horses, my biggest takeaway from this trend, okay, um, and this always plays an important 
you, you know, factor to me, to the way that I handicap. Um, but I think with this trend of so many coming in fresh, okay, and a lot of three-year-olds as, as well, it seems to me, more than, than a lot of other years in, in, in prime contending positions, um, I think a lot is going to depend on uh, trainer. I think the trainers, you, you, you know, I mean, certain trainers are better than others fresh, you know, um, and I, I don't, I don't think there's a way around that. I think if you dismiss that in your handicapping analysis, you could be making a big mistake um, that might not have bit you certain other years when they're all coming in, you know, off a more recent prep. I, I think you'll separate uh, some of the when top I, levels. I was thinking the biggest winners with all these layoff horses are the clockers because they're going to have everyone listening to them about who looks good and, uh, and it does matter. I mean, we all have people we we probably trust more than others. And to me, uh, you would expect these grade one animals, some in horse of the year contention to look good. I would say most of them are, but percentage wise, one of them has to be dull. I mean, they're, they're not all going to come in gangbusters. But Nobody's going to say that though. No, none of them ever well, said. But that's, the that, difference, that's why you got to find someone you trust. The difference right. too, guys, though, you can trust your own eyes now. Because right. XBTV will yes. have every single workout, just like we've been blessed with here in Kentucky with the new thing Bruno's doing with Churchill. It is unbelievable how much better your handicapping should be if you're watching those videos. And you can watch XBTV, which every one of them. And if you think one of them don't look right, that's when you start calling the people you trust and say, hey, am I seeing this right? This horse don't look right. I mean... I mean, I don't know. I'm sure there's going to be a scratch or two that'll get announced here soon, from what I hear. Sure. Um, but well, I'll tell you this: if 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 I could make a bet, and you you guys know I'm not an advance better, okay? I don't even advance bet the Derby. I did bet the Jaguars to win the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> well, that's a little um, different. And, 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 right, a little different, just because I liked. I got 26 to one, and I figured they were a lot to win the division. So you know, probably get a home playoff game. It's like the second season, the playoffs. You know, I thought Trevor Lawrence in the second year with with, with Doug Peterson would come alive, and what, whatever. I thought it was a nice bet at, at twenty six to one. Um, and we'll see what happens. But you, you, you know, I should at least get to the playoffs, so it'll be fun. But if I could bet the Breeders' Cup this year and find a book that would take this bet, this is the bet I would make. Forte. Not in the gate. I was just going to say, can we bet on Forte not running? I'll take, <laughs> I mean, I'll take, I'll take one up, to five right? if you want to give it to me. He's not going to be in the classic. I don't think he's going to run myself. I'll so. be surprised if we don't know by the end of next week. What do you think, Ed? you think he's running? No. I mean, he's, he's <laughs> just out of time. Right. Um, uh, interesting. interesting. Okay. He, so he is, uh, he is training at Churchill, though. He is on right. the track. Um, so that, that at least gives me some hope we'll see him again, but it won't right. be at the Breeders' Cup. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'll tell you the truth. I would rather see him run in the Classic because I would probably be betting against him and oh, he would probably take his yeah, share of money. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I, 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 I don't think he runs. But let's talk about the ones we think are running. <laughs> let's go. Uh, Ar Archangelo. Coming in, Travers. Going to be the favorite. Um, should be. We should say, talking about trainers, Jenna Antonucci has done a phenomenal job with this horse, going from the Belmont to the Travers Fresh, now trying the Classic Fresh. But I would have to say, she's somebody that's in uncharted waters. Well, I, I agree with that. But the horse, I think she's got the best horse. I really do, and I think the pace is going to be perfect for her if Saudi Crown and Arabian Night both go. If they're, well, they're both, you know, it ain't, it ain't it ain't a beauty contest, but I will say this: in the recent pictures that I've seen of Arch Archangel on the racetrack, and even even playing around in the pen and stuff, I mean, he does have that beast look to him. I mean, he really he really does. And and looking at here's the last five winners of the Breeders' Cup Classic at Santa Anita. Fort Larnett went wire to wire. Mucho Macho Man sat fourth and win. 
Byron went wire to wire, and you know, we all know he knocked over half the field. Arrogate broke initially fifth, was third by the turn, sat third, and nailed Chrome on the wire. Vino Rosso, who normally used to be a way back closer, sat fourth. So to me, you better be able to sit one, two, three, four in that first flight and not get too far back. And history is telling me that my eyes are right. I think Archangelo is going to sit right where Vino did, right where Arrogant did, right where Mucho Macho Man did. And I think he's going to have every chance to win. Now, is he good enough? Maybe it'll be a blanket finish. I don't know. But uh, I think Archangelo is clearly the favorite and the one to beat. What's your thoughts on him, Ed? Yeah, he's he's the favorite. Uh, I think he'll be underlaid. Um, I'm just nervous about how much money he'll take. And, I mean, you mentioned Jenna, and I'm going to be honest, I'll take my medicine. Part of the reason I was against this horse in the Travers is, you know, she's a X percent trainer lifetime and has this amazing horse now. And I just thought, oh, is she really going to beat Pletcher at the getting him ready off a layoff game? And my thought was no, and I was wrong. And that's no less in play for me now. I mean, she still has to get this one ready for a much stiffer test against older horses, but she showed she could do it once. So that's off the board. I was wrong about that. But I I'm just really nervous about how much money this horse will take. In my mind, he's the only horse of the year candidate in the race that if he wins, he's horse of the year, no matter what else happens. Uh, that's going to get attention. Obviously, her story gets attention, and attention means money. So uh, I know that I the horse can beat me again for the third straight time, but I just think the price is going to be too short. Interesting. Um, I'm 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 more in Ed's camp than Dan's camp on this. Um, well, I didn't say I was betting him. <laughs> I, I, I get it. But I just, no, you, you, I just you said guys, he's the horse to beat. You guys like him and think I he's, agree with that. The price you will guys, be you guys like him and think he's the horse to beat. I, um, I know going in, I'm I'm going to be against though. There's just no price this horse could possibly be that I'd be interested in. Well, like, like I said, I'm 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 in the camp of 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 of, of not betting it for for but for different reasons. Um, and this is one of those things and. I ain't bashful, so I'm 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 I'll I'll just come out and say it. I don't I don't think he's got a chance to win the race. Wow. I mean that's an opportunity for you for sure. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think he got a chance to win the race. If I if I if, if it was the last race of the pick six, okay, and there's a dozen horses in the race, and you told me, John, you're alive, you could have any six you want to close out the pick six, he he wouldn't be one of them. Oh my lord. Not in the top six. I don't. I don't think he can win the race. Wow. No, I, mean, I only think there's four throwing of them. down the gauntlet. I like it. Uh, I don't. I don't. I, you know. I could little and listen. I'm in the same boat as you. I didn't think he could win the Travers, and he humbled me. You know what I mean? So none of us like you him. know. He may do it to me again. You know. He, yeah. You know. He he won't be the first nor the last horse <laughs> to humble me. You know. But. Uh, You'll know when they open the gate. I played, I played, I played the cards that I see on my hand. You know what I mean? And I, I just, I, 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 I don't think you can win. Um, so, so why? If, huh? What's the reason? A um, couple of reasons. Okay. I think the Belmont that he won was a staggering finish race. Okay. I yeah, think that's dressed looked, up. I think it looked a lot better than it than it than it truly was. They came home awfully slow. I think in the Travers, a couple of horses didn't fire. Um, Age it, didn't fire. Right, they just they just didn't didn't fire. Um, I think Forte is overrated. Um, Fair. I think, uh, it's another race that I I just think looks better than it was. And when I combine those two things with taking a trainer that's never had a horse like this before and never brought a horse fresh like that, it's a big ask, okay? And I think, and I don't mean to disrespect her because she's done a marvelous job, but we're talking about betting. And, you know, I would do the one in a 14-horse field. 
you know, I, 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 I think that there's a good chance that no matter how good Archangelo is, there's a possibility he runs out of trainer at the 316th pole or at the eighth pole. You know what I mean? Because it's tough. Well, it's tough to get a horse to win at, uh, like that. And if, she does, that. if she does, I salute Jenna. Great job. You know what I mean? Phenomenal. You fooled me and you deserve all the accolades for doing it. Um, but I, I would don't. Also, I would also say this, John. If the race was at Churchill or Belmont, I would say he's got a better chance. Shipping to California is a different ball game. Well, she was smart. She went out there early. She's been and smart. She's made every right Mandela move. She's and Baff Mandela and Baffert on their track, speed favoring track. So I agree with, I mean, for people that don't want to play a favorite, I, I would not tell you you're nuts not taking him. I mean, you, you got to try to beat favorites on Breeders' Cup Day, and there's going to be a bunch of them. Okay. Um, but that, that that that's really what it comes down to, you, you, you know, for me. So, uh, you, you, you know, if you ask me who I'm going to bet, I couldn't answer that question right now. We're, 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 we're three weeks out. Um, I think I'm down to two for sure. If you ask me who I'm not, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to bet. I could tell you. You know, Archangel's not not on my on All my right. show. Who's um, next? Go Rocket Ride. Improving three-year-old Richard Mandela. We know that he is one of the best at pointing for a race, at getting one ready to fire a huge shot. Um, the horse missed some time, you know, ran to Haskell, come back, you know, to the Pacific Classic, I think was a really good race. I mean... It's it's he's an improving three year old. It's hard hard to find any major knock on him except the fact that Arabian Night beat, beat him last time. But you know that, that was then. This is now. Uh, what are you guys' feelings on him? I like him. That's one of the top three horses in the race. I think. I mean, it's Mandela on his home on his. I mean, at his house. I mean, you're <laughs> coming into his house. Um, the horse has the perfect style to win. He's going to be one, two, three, four out of the gate. And, uh, you know, I, I really believe this classic's going to be one of those, just like Mucho Macho Man's was, just like Byron's was. When it's a three horse photo, you know, they're all staggering to the wire together. And I think he's going to be in that photo. I really do. I think, I think you have to use him if you're betting thick fours and fives. You have to. As of right now, I'm I'm a little concerned about if Saudi Crown and Derma Sotogake are in this race, what that means for the Pacific Classic Exacta. Uh, to me, both of them in here makes their jobs much more difficult. If neither goes, you know, Saudi Crown to the dirt mile or skips the Breeders' Cup altogether, Derma isn't ready. It's a super long layoff for him. Maybe doesn't even draw in. Who knows? Uh, then obviously we could be looking at a scenario where, oh, how did I not have Mandela and Baffert going one, two all the way around? But as is now, if Saudi Crown and Durham are both in, uh, I just think that ends up with a lot of pressure up front. And I'm going to be looking for horses uh, who are who are further back. Interesting. Not me. I don't want anybody further back. If I don't think they're going to be one, playing, two, you're playing that. You're playing that track, that historical track trend. I get it. Yeah, I and want, not I even, I mean, Dan went through before. the five at Santa Anita, but even looking most recently, uh, with Authentic, Nixco, and Flightline, which Flightline is an anomaly because he's one of the best we've ever seen, but certainly Authentic and Nixco, no cinches, but I mean, they just took the race to everyone else and made it look easy. So, I mean, the, the classic certainly has that forward profile. No doubt. Um, Arabian night, uh, gritty, gritty, gritty win in the Pacific classic. Um, really, really worked hard. I, I actually wasn't surprised when they said they were going to go in fresh off that hard race in the Pacific classic. I mean, he really, uh, you, you know, moved forward off the Haskell, uh, what are your thoughts on him? I mean, we know that's a race that Bob Baffert certainly knows how to win, especially at, at that racetrack, you know? Ed, he's similar for me to, to go rocket ride, uh, you know, pending on who else is in there. I will add though, with Arabian night, uh, just cause in particular with Baffert who takes so much money, it sticks out with this Colt, his ragazin numbers are, are not 
the best of this group, uh, not even close as a matter of fact. So personally for me is a big numbers guy, knowing the, the, that he's going to be what third, fourth, fifth choice. I mean, some moving parts still on that, but I'm not sure given his numbers and how reliant I am on them uh, that I could back him at the price he's going to be. I hope he sticks around for a four-year-old year though, because I definitely see a, the, the profile him and go rocket ride uh, where they improve at four. Uh, and that makes them both very exciting, but as three-year-olds against older, I, I'm just not sure the number power is there. I, I, I agree that both have that, that, that look that they're going to be really, really good four-year-olds. I mean, they're lightly raced three-year-olds that are improving at the time of year um, that you want to see. Uh, and I think Arabian Night, for me, a lot of it's going to come down to um, pace and whether or not we see horses like Saudi Crown and Dermasota Kake in the race uh, and, 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 and how the pace shapes up. Uh, you, you know, it, it's, it's, it's going to be a big factor whether those two are in or not um, in, in, in how this race, this race, you know, plays out. Why the Barrio, the next one, um, off a long layoff, he run, you know, into Whitney, uh, probably his, well, no question, the best race that he's ever run in his second start for Rick Dutrow. And Rick was the first one to pack up and head out west right after that um and he's been out there with this horse you know a week after the whitney um he's another guy who knows how to win the classic hasn't done it in a while that's really you know no fault of his own or you know do, do more to circumstances he hasn't been around for a while but i think he's already shown he hadn't forgotten anything that he knew um this is a horse that will benefit from pace, you know, and, and, and is coming off a lifetime best and is coming off a lifetime best second start for a new barn and uh, no knocks in my book, none, zero. The only knock might be Dan's is that he probably won't be sitting in that quote, you know, winner's profile pocket you know he'll be a little further back than that if the pace is as 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 it looks like it might be on paper right now especially if those other horses go but taking that factor out of the equation he will be in a, a spot where just on a regular pace projection you know might work to his advantage yeah he's not one of the four that i like now arabian night is in the, the four i think can win um arabian nights the whole thing with arabian night is like you said is saudi crown or dermot are they actually going to run because if they all three run then obviously he's going to have a rougher time and maybe i'll flip to white abario then as my third or fourth horse but uh right now i just don't i don't like any of the four-year-olds i think the three-year-olds are better so maybe i'll be wrong on that but i think it's a lot like if you remember back when Curlin and Street Sense ran at Monmouth and Lawyer Ron was the talk of the of the country for the older horses and didn't get a call. Now, of course, it was in the slop and who knows if he'd have got a call on a fast track. But um, I think White Abario, he's not going to be in his comfort zone. He wants to be close. When he broke you know, second in the Whitney, I was like, oh, boy, he's going to win from here. I bet on him in the Met in the Met Mile. I bet on him at 20 to 1. And he got a rough trip that day. So, you know, I'm torn on him. I just don't think he's going to go to California and beat those California horses. And I'm usually against California horses, but these, the Mandela and the Baffert are pretty good. And uh, I don't know if he'll be able to beat them. Well, I love him. Uh, I think right now he's, I'd say my most likely winner uh, the, the Whitney to me was the best race we've seen this year. And I know Cody's wish didn't run his race, but I mean, he, he beat the best, what many thought was the best horse in training at the time and made it look easy. And it occurred after, you know, the unfortunate circumstances in the test. And I think that, you know, cast a pall over the performance and understandably so, but 
that was an eye opener to me. And Rick Dutro, I know for sure, is a Sheets devotee. Uh, and he probably just looked at this eye popping number second in his barn and just saw no path uh, to run him again, fearing the bounce and then fearing, OK, well, if I run him in a race like the Woodward, uh, give him some time. If he runs super strong there, now I'm in a spot where I have to wheel back in the Breeders' Cup. So he he just decided, well, we'll see if we can replicate it off the long layoff. And based on the content I've put out and the feedback with him being my most likely winner, he's going to be, I mean, fourth choice at an absolute minimum and probably longer than that. So maybe he doesn't win. Maybe it's too long of a layoff, but I'm going to get the right price for absolute certain. And I'm gambling that he replicates the Whitney. And if he does, he wins this race. If he runs back to the Whitney, the race is for second. But how can he? He's not going to break second. Well, then they're not going to go 48 and one. I, I'll, I'll definitely be less bullish if the, the pace considerations. I mean, right now, my opinion is based on Saudi crown and Derma Sotogake being in this race. Okay. Right. And, and not, I, that definitely changes things. I'm not so sure about Derma Sotogake. I don't, I don't, I, you know, I only know what I've read and what I, what I've heard, but you know, following the game and, 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 and handicapping the moves of, of, of trainers, um, I would tend to think pretty strongly that Brad is going to run Saudi crown in the classic. I don't know why he wouldn't. He's not really a duck anybody kind of guy. He's got a fast horse that's that's doing well. He's going to take his shot on the front end. He knows the speed track. He wins, Um, he gets a championship. Yeah, you know what I mean? I mean, I I just see I see him going for it, you know. You're the number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Are you going to go to the tournament or go to the NIT? I mean, why on earth would you run in the dirt mile? Who care who even won it last year? Who cares? Cody's I don't wish. care. Cody's I think wish. the race should be eliminated. No, but so, I would. Yeah, it's. Right. Why even? I mean, I don't even think it's a decision. I I like Saudi Crown. He's my top pick. I mean, oh, I, okay. I, I, all right, there we go. All right, a monster chance to go wire to wire. Yeah. Yeah. No, if he's in there, they, they, I, 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 he's and, 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 he's too. He's another one fresh. He's run once and, since July. Right. Another. Exactly. Another one. Um, I mean, uh, yeah. I mean. I'm nervous if Arabian's in there with him. Right. But, sure. You know, we'll see at post time if they're both in there. And like Ed said, well, why to Barrio? I mean, Saudi Crown, don't he have to be six or eight to one? I mean, he can't, they can't all be three to one. Oh, he'll be six or eight to one. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the price, again, you got Brad Cox. The price is right. He's going to be, he's got every, I mean, I still distinctly remember Twitter. It just started back then sending a message to Brian Hernandez on Fort Larnett and saying, I just want to know if you're going to go to the lead. Please tell me you're going to the lead. And he actually sent back, he said, I will be on the lead. This was the day before the classic. I, I couldn't believe he answered me. I was in shock. And right then sold me like, I said, Dad, whoever makes the lead is going wire to wire. And Hernandez just told me he's going to the lead. I'm taking him. I'm betting on him. And nobody thought Fort Larner could win that race out in California. I mean, and he wired them. I certainly didn't. So this, I, this horse I, can wire. I forget him. who I like, but it wasn't him. Yeah, me too. But uh, it, it won, won him. I mean, Saudi Crown can't be lower than fifth choice in my mind. Archangel is going to be favored. The two California horses will be in there, and Usha to so- the Japanese horse is going to be a, a top four choice. So. That leaves Saudi Crown and White of Barrio fifth or sixth. Which that's the perfect pick four and pick five horses. Yeah, right? no, that's, I mean, that's, that's where you want to be. Like um, moving right along. Okay, we eliminated a lot of a lot of horses we're going to talk about a little bit. Zandon. Zandon finally put it together against what I thought was a field he just completely outclassed last <laughs> time. I, I, I remember my comment to myself before the race was, if he don't win today, he's just not half the horse that I, I thought he was at, at some point. And he actually wasn't getting a good trip. And I thought, look at this. He may not win. And then when he got, you know, got to the outside, you know, class showed and he just, you know, you know, ran, ran past him. Could he possibly be just throwing it out there? Um, possibly be one of those excuse that 
the reference like a light bulb horse, like the light bulb went off and now, you know, he's put it all together at the right time or he's just not, not, not as good as the rest of these. Yeah. I see it as more not ready for prime time. Uh, I do think, and you know, this kind of blazing seven style with Chad Brown, who just his horses fire when he points for a race. Uh, not that he's alone in that, but Chad, you can trust him that the horse is going to be ready. And I think that's the case here. Uh, so if we're talking about 20 to one plus, which is certainly possible, which sounds insane because I, you know, a lot of people have liked this horse through the years, but like Dan said, there's 14 horses in here. We know Archangelo is going to be favored. They can all be less than 10 to one to me is one that, Hey, do you key him underneath? Cause he's going to be picking up pieces uh, I could definitely see that approach. A win would truly surprise me. Yeah, I, I agree with that, but I will say this. Um, if Pratt winds up on him, which I don't know, we know, we know where Pratt is going to be for sure as of right now, but if Pratt winds up on him for Chad and he's 20 to one in the classic, okay, or 25 to one in the classic and Saudi Crown and Dermasota Kake are in there, with Arabian Night, um, and 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 in the other speed that that that's in there, and it looks like there is some other speed, and he crosses the wire first and runs past a a a, a pace collapsing race late, at pays fifty something dollars. It'll be, <laughs> it'll be one of those. Look at this, Flavian Pratt and Chad Brown at fifty something dollars in the in, in in the Breeders' Cup Classic in a race loaded with loaded loaded with speed. I mean, they almost pulled it off. Was it was it last year? I can't. They all run together. He had a filly in the distance. Don't mention that race. That cost me. Uh, down don't, by don't, road. Don't, don't mention that. Yeah. Don't, no, we don't talk about that. We don't like, talk. Zandon is going to hit the board. We don't he, talk about he's that. He's hit the board 12 or 13 races. He's going to hit the board. The worst part about Dunbar Road was, okay, I was alive for a lot of money, okay, a lot of money. And I watched the race up in the restaurant on the fourth floor at Del Mar. Okay. I was there at the Breeders' Cup. And for whatever reason, no knock on Del Mar, they still got those old low definition TVs angled up above the tables in that fourth floor restaurant that I don't know if my glasses were like four inches thick, maybe I could have seen something. And I was so high up that looking down at the track, I couldn't see nothing. So I knew I was in the photo, but I didn't know if I won. So I call my friend in Brooklyn who's watching on NBC and figure he's got to know. Now, everybody in the room where I'm at is calling Dunbar Road, okay? But I know if I don't know, they possibly can't. They, <laughs> they, they don't know either, you know what I mean? And it means a lot more money to me than 99.9% .9 of these people. So I call my friend and he's like, you got it. She got up. She won. I'm like, are you sure? He goes, I'm telling you, she won. She got it. I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank you. And the worst part of that beat, and you guys can relate, and hopefully some of the listeners can relate because we're horse players. I felt the thrill of the victory. I felt the win because I yeah. believed in my friend and what he said watching on NBC. And then when they put that number up, and all that money just went right out of my account, even though it was never there. It was one of the worst racetrack experiences of my there many, we, could, we, could do, we could do like a 10-hour show on bad beats. Uh, <laughs> the gut punch. Right. So getting back oh, to Brandon. Getting back to, getting back to punch. Zandon. Worse. Throat <laughs> punch. Throat punch. I mean, Zandon, most of you guys know, I, I bet on him in December. And November out in Vegas, right. I was getting, I can't remember. It was like 88 to one or 85 to one on Zandon. I was getting 40,000 if he won the Derby. So who didn't think he was going to win in the middle of the lane? I mean, when he, when he came out around the epicenter, I was like, I got it. Oh my God. I, I got it. I actually bet on a horse in December. That's going to win the Derby. So for that split second. No, I bet him too. So I, I, I mean, and he's been a hanging, like, you know what, since yeah, until the last race. But I can't knock anybody that takes this horse because if the pace melts down, maybe he comes running 
and he's probably going to run third. He's got a big, he's probably going to run third or maybe even fourth, but he's going to come. I just don't know if he's good enough, if those other horses will be gone on him, but uh, I can't knock it at that price. I can't tell anybody not to take him. I think yeah, the only man. thing, the only thing I said the entire rest of that day after that Dunbar road race was three words, no matter what anybody said to me, somebody said to me, who do you like in the next race? What's the difference? Where are you going to dinner tonight? What's the difference? When you're heading back home, what's the difference? I think that's all I said for the, for the, for the rest of the day, man. Yeah. It was a, it was a yeah. tough one, man. It was our revenge. Uh, bright future. Anybody? Any takers? I think the horse is going to be over overlaid. Uh, just not getting any respect. Has the mile and a quarter win. Fletcher. And from a form standpoint, coming into it the right way, uh, you know, maybe 10 years ago, we'd say otherwise because of the longer layoff, but that's just not in play anymore. Uh, just one of those horses, like, I wouldn't love if for whatever reason people were steamed on it and it was a low price, but this is a horse coming off a, a grade one and a better one than the Woodward, I would say, uh, who's going to be 15 to one. So in the mix for me, very much so. I, I definitely prefer White Abario, uh, but but this horse just is not getting the respect I think he deserves, and that means it's an opportunity. Okay. Um, you got any thoughts on him, Dan? Your yeah. face. We, 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 good thing we're not playing poker because we already know I mean, you're playing. I mean, it's the right profile. I'll give him that. Um, he's going to be forward. I just – I don't think he's good enough, but uh... – Again, if he's 15 or 20 to one and you're betting a pick four or five and you're spreading out, I mean, I wouldn't knock anybody to put him on their ticket. But uh, yeah, I mean, back, back to what Jonathan sort of led with. I, I mean, if I, I'd much rather take my chances and be live to this horse in a pick four for five thousand dollars and have Archangelo for seven hundred. Right. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I could. I could. I could, I could co-sign that for sure. Um, now. Ushba Tesoro, I, and I hope I said that correctly, no disrespect meant, Ushba Tesoro. Almost sounds like it could be Italian. Ushba Tesoro. Yeah. <laughs> Ushba Tesoro. Um, Ed, tell us a little bit about this Japanese horse, because I don't know a heck of a lot about it. I mean, for those who have watched, whether it's our derby or any derby through the years, uh may know that I cannot stand uh, the horses uh, that ship from Dubai uh, to uh, the Derby. And in the last few years, the, it's been Japanese-based horses who have done it. I've been dead against. Zero interest whatsoever. I'd use all and take them off. Uh, but this is different. Obviously, it's the Breeders' Cup. Uh, but they've shipped into Santa Anita and one before. So, you know, there's all that. Uh, but th this horse, if you look at his PPs back into 2022, uh, similar profile. They gave him the summer off last year as well, as they did this year after the Dubai World Cup. And if we were talking about a horse who did not have a prep, and granted the prep was in a regular handicap, it, not an A circuit track in Japan. So it was literally they just wanted to get a race into him. I'd be less inclined to play him off that kind of layoff from April. Uh, but the Dubai World Cup, I thought, was a uh, strong enough race. And to me, it, as always, it's going to come down to price. But given what we've seen from the three-year-old and older division this year, uh, a wild card makes some sense. If he's second choice, that's probably going to be too low for me. Uh, but if we're talking any better than that, odds-wise, he's in the mix. Uh, I'm excited to potentially bet this horse. Interesting. You know anything about him, Dan? You, you? No, I don't. I don't know much. I mean, there wasn't much in the World Cup. I didn't think, but uh, again, if he's fifteen or twenty to one, no, he won't be that. You know, if he's five to one, six to one, so I'm not putting him on any tickets. But uh, you know, it's one of those. If I if if I've got the best trainers in America on my ticket, you know, the best California trainers, the best New York trainer, I. And I lose. And I mean, if I got Cox, Brown, Mandela, Baffert, and I lose at the end of a pick four or five, then I just lose. I, I mean, 
if he beats me, he's going to beat me. I, you know, the, the I, I think he'll be eight to one. This staff by a nose. You know, I had a bunch of them in that this staff, and she beat me and knocked me out. So uh, you can't take them all. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm you, you know, I got to say my, the jury for me is still out on, on, on this horse. I don't know enough about him yet. I have watched a couple of his replays. Um, I'll say this, if he wasn't 10 for 30, I might think different, but I just keep staring at that 10 for 30 thinking, well, how good is he? He's 10 for 30. Right. And if he was 10 for 12, then I'd be like, well, maybe he is some kind of stud. Right. Or, or maybe he's just not running against much, and so he's reeling off all these wins against older horses because there ain't any. I I don't know. Wasn't Cigar one for eight when he started his win streak? Mm, just about, something like yeah. that. Yeah, when they switched him to the dirt, and all of a sudden you yeah. decide, let's be a racehorse. Um, proxy. Kind of know what we're going to get with Proxy. He's been around a long time. I think we 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 we, we kind of know what his ceiling is, and I would be of the opinion that even his ceiling race or his his A race is probably not good enough to beat somebody's if they show up with their A races. What do you guys think? Can't win. Yeah, and uh, I don't know how much you've seen me talk about this on X, formerly Twitter, but. The stallion, the retirement stallion announcement before the Breeders' Cup is a toss for me. So when they uh, said he'd be retiring after the Classic, uh, not that I loved him anyway. Sounds like I had a little more interest than Dan, maybe, but I'm, I'm out. Okay. Um, Saudi Crown, Dan's top choice. <laughs> um, if he goes, I think we can all agree he is probably the likely pace setter. Um, assuming he breaks well and gets out of the gate the way that, you know, he's supposed to over a track that's historically been a speed, speed track, Brad Cox. I mean, they don't really get much hotter than Brad is. Um, speed's always dangerous. I mean, what else, what, 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 what can you say if he clears, you know, he's the kind of horse that if he clears and he's got a length and a half, two lengths into that first turn, I don't really care what the fractions are, even if they're 22, um, because a lot of times you see horses run them off their heels and they just, they just, these good horses don't come back even when they go fast. So if he clears and I don't have him, I'm going to be concerned. <laughs> yeah, I'd be concerned too, but I, I, it's with all we've talked about on the, the reason I don't like the SoCal, if he's in, the same applies. Uh, so if, if all four of the horses I think want the leader in, I'm just going to have to let him beat me if if he turns in a, a world class performance. You know, one of the most frustrating things to me in, in in watching races, and I, and I'm a reluctant guy to criticize jockeys. You know, I give them a lot of leeway. I will do it on occasion. I try to be respect respectful about it. But one of the most frustrating things to me as a, as a horse player is when. You see a race that has speed on paper, and we see it a lot on the grass, you know, and one guy goes and he's got two lengths and they're going slow and nobody else goes. And you're like, why is nobody else going? What, 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 I, I, I just don't know. It's frustrating. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't get it either, especially watching turf races where the leader goes in 115. Right. The, the mid-pack horses are going 117. Like, what? Right. You Why? Know, what are you thinking? You know what I mean? You, you, you know, if we know you're not going to win, you're a professional rider. You should probably know you're not going to win from, from sitting there, you know, right. um, very frustrating. And, and I fear the scenario of Saudi crown loose. Um, even though my mind and my analytical handicapping tells me there's other pace and they should be taking shots at them. Um, and nobody should let him, you know. Let, let me ask you guys crap. both this. Do you think he can get to the half, a length in front, and 46 and one? Oh, he'll be yes. in front if it's 46 and one. Yes. Because Byron and Fort Larned both went 46 and two and both kept going. Right. Yeah, and like I said, I'm not as worried about the fractions as I he am. Just, a, he, I'd he, rather. If it's 45, he's in trouble. But if it's if he can get there in 46 and anything, look out. 
if I don't have him, okay, and he's neck and neck on the lead, and they go 47 and change, and he's neck and neck with his three horses out there winging, I would be more comfortable catching him than if he's 46 flat by himself. If that makes any sense to you, yeah, I, agree. I agree with that. I want yeah. him. I want him clear. Now I don't know if he can get there with Arabian Night. Well, you know that's the that's the maybe. But we've well, seen him before. Thing, one thing, the uh, gate, one of them gets smashed. He, the other he's, one's gone. He's no worse than fifth choice. So I mean, you're you're going to get whatever price you want. Okay, um, Forte. None of us think he's running, but he, he's, he's on the running. list of probables. Well, if he does he show up, anybody think he's got a chance? No. Impossible to win off this kind of preparation. Uh, and the Todd track, is the one track, of the best track profile not, can't. can't happen. Right. I I I I I tend to agree. Um like I said, I'm looking for for a book that'll give me him not being in the gate, and I can't I can't find one. No, and I'm and I'm a pretty resourceful guy when it comes to wagering, so that that tells you, <laughs> you know, that, that tells you that he's probably not gonna be in the gate. Um, Mage, they say they're still going. They love the work the other day. Um, he's got to you know turn it around off of. No explanation that we know of, at least a uh, flop of a race in, in, in the Travers. Any thoughts on Mage turning the tables, waking up? It's shades of funny side to me in 03. Just uh, went went the wrong way in the middle of the season. And it's tough to get that back. Uh, certainly hope he runs it four. And with Airdrie being the, the, the final destination, I could see where they give him that shot. Uh, he debuted this year. Uh, he did not run it too. So uh, it's been a unique season for him. Uh, he's lasted longer than Justify did after uh, winning the Derby as an unraced two-year-old. That Travers was was really bad. And, and I, the layoff might help him get back to wherever he sort of needs to be. But even at a biggish price, I, I just I just don't like what we saw this summer. No, I don't either. I, if I was them, I'd run him in the Clark. I'd, yeah, or, a, I mean, I'd even wait for the Pegasus. No for me. I was just going to say I would run him into Pegasus over a track I know he's familiar with and freshen him up even even even, even more. Um, defunded. Uh, also a horse that seems to have kind of gone off form, you know, the wrong way or, or, or off tilt. But I will say this. In, in a race like the Classic or the Derby, a couple of others, Bob Baffert's just a scary guy to leave out. You know what I mean? He's just, yeah. a, you know, I mean, yeah, he's yeah. fooled me a couple of times. And, you know, every time he does, I'm like, you know what? I ain't never letting him fool me again, you know? Um, but I do because I don't bet that way, you know? Um, I, I don't see him. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I, I don't see him. I think he's just not coming into the race the right way if he even shows up. Um I think it would be a a vote of confidence for Arabian Night if he doesn't run the funded. Um, if I was him, I'd put the funded in the mile. He might, he might you know, but if he Going doesn't run into the, the mile, classic, he has no chance in here. You know, yeah, you know, re, re, reading the tea leaves, I would say, you know what, Arabian Night's doing really, really well. Um, Got Arabian Night, stick him in the mile, and hope you steal both purses. You know, but the funded to me just not coming in right. You guys, anybody? I agree. His, his sheet looks like Dan's golf shot, straight <laughs> and then. <whoop>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, don't don't worry, worry Dan. Your your golf shot looks looks better than mine, so that's okay. <laughs> um, practical move. You know, practical move to me. Uh, yeah. On paper, I, I what was he one to nine last time? You, you know, he comes back off that layoff, and before the scratches, I looked at that race in the morning, and before the scratches, I said, you know, he should win, but he's no cinch. After the scratches, I think there were two scratches that kind of changed, and it looked like you know he was, you, you know, he was going to win. But that you know, it was a very pretty race to watch. He looked like a very pretty racehorse, um, but at the end of the day, he did what he was supposed to do. Um, against much lesser. Is that enough 
based on what he did earlier in the year and off that race now to come up and step up and 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 move back to the head of the three-year-old class, let alone the entire class, I say no. Yeah, I, I liked him in the spring, but Skinner certainly hasn't flattered him. And uh, you know, given the one prep he's had, this seems like a tall order. Uh, the Malibu would make a lot more sense to me, or even the, the Clark, if they wanted, you know, to try older for a big purse, but this is too much. I agree. I think he should be in the mile if he even runs in the Breeders' Cup, but I think this is just way too much. I mean, he, I think he's another one that's got a chance to be a really good four-year-old. So just don't I ruin him at the end of the year. And just, I mean, he, he's got the perfect, set up to be a really really good four-year-old i agree i think he's a really really nice horse i just don't think he's ready for this right now i agree he's not he would if he ran the classic he would not be on my ticket yeah. he ran in the mile yeah he'd probably be on my ticket now clapton if clapton wins i'll be saying the same thing i said about dunbar road what's the difference only for a completely different reason <laughs> But the only thing you'll hear me say after the race is Clapton wins. Anybody says anything to me, I'm like, what's the difference? Head scratcher if he wins for me. Yeah, he. if he hit the super, I'd be shocked. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those, if the race just completely collapses, maybe somehow he gets fourth, but just the numbers aren't there. But I'm glad for Chad Summers. I'm glad he's got a horse. I'm glad that. <laughs> that he's doing better, and I'm glad he's heading to the to the Breeders' Cup. More power to him. If I was in his scenario, I'd go too. Oh, yeah. I don't. I don't understand these people who are like that like to train or own other people's horses. I I'd be in every grade one I could if I had a horse like that. Right, yeah. why not? And with no shame, I wouldn't feel any absolutely any regret. All right. Assuming sound, of course. Right. right. Of course. Goes yeah. goes without saying. Um. Senior Buscador. I will say this about Senior Buscador. Um, he's got some very good. I know you mentioned the Ragazins. He's got some. Uh, I mean, his pattern is not what I would say I like to see, but he's got some very fast races on Thoroughbred. Yeah, uh, I haven't looked at his Ragazins, but he's got some. He's got no, some he, races that are fast enough to win. Bottom line, he fits. I, yeah. I'd rather play him than Zanda, and he's going to be a bigger price, and you know, going to have a similar trip. So. Yeah, I, I could see putting him in the trifecta. He he would be my long shot. You know, I, I don't know about A, uh, you know, the way I play tickets. But to me, depending on what else is around the classic, um, you know, I, the turf is the preceding race. I really like Warlike Goddess and will probably like a couple euros. I could see tying them up with Senor Buscador, you know, on, on a ticket that I'm looking for a blow up because I'm on the logicals elsewhere. Uh, he's he's not a throw up to me by any means. Um, Skippy Longstocking. Anybody? Any Out. takers? Big price? No? Out. Out. Yeah, I just... <sighs> He won't shock me, you know, it's just kind of a cliche at this point. You know, there there are others I like le less for sure, but just we to me, it's similar to Zandon in that we we know what he does against, you know, the true grade one top level, and it's not win. So, um, but they're both going to be bigger prices. And, you know, on that tier of, gosh, if I'm right in every other race, can I catch lightning with Skippy? Maybe, but definitely not a key by any means. Il Miracolo. Well, John, I hate to cut you off. I got to get, I got guys waving at me. All right. Um, Ed and I'll wrap it up. No worries. Yeah, we'll wrap it up. Il right, Miracolo is the least likely winner. Right. Thank you. Okay, you're out. Um, I would tend to agree with that. Least, least, least likely. Um, King of Steel. I think he's running on Saturday. I don't think we're going to see him in the Breeders' Cup. Am I wrong? Yeah, I, I have him on my list just because he seems to be the one that Breeders' Cup is sort of set of all the Euros is most likely to show up. But uh, he's it, running it's really in the hard good, to sort of he's running in on Champions point. Day Saturday. I, I can't see him running there and then then then, then coming here. Yeah. 
Um, and then last is Dermo Sotokake, who um, we, 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 we kind of talked about. And, and, and if he runs, I think we can agree, he impacts the race one way Absolutely. or another. Um, you know, I don't think he can win, but, you know, he certainly impacts the race. Man, it, it, I don't want to say too bad because I actually like the horse. But with another Japanese horse in the race, that'll probably mitigate the money that would blindly come in on a Japanese horse like Derma Sotogake. Uh, you know, between the layoff, what we saw in the Derby, it's really hard to like him for anything. Uh, so I do hope he takes whatever money he takes. But uh I just don't see how a horse with his style and this preparation can even be competitive in this race. All right. And there, there, there you have it. We lost Dan, but we still got Ed and me and uh, <laughs> Ed uh, horse racing nation. You can find a ton of Ed's opinions and content and analysis and stats, which I always love um, at horse racing nation. They have a, their, their website and their YouTube channel. Me, you know where to find Pass the Wire TV and Pass the Wire. We've got our seminar coming up. Um, I'm doing the Breeders' Cup by the Thoroughgraph Numbers and Patterns, nice. uh, which people seem to like, where I kind of go over all the numbers and patterns and, and, yeah. and see who, who looks like they're going forward, who looks like they're... That, that's the key. I mean, you, you, you find the right horse who maybe hasn't run races people think are, can win, but if they move forward, can even crash the exacta or try at a nice price with these 14 horse fields. That's huge. Absolutely. Okay. Um, always a pleasure. I'll stop this now, Ed. We can say goodbye off camera. And uh, thanks everybody for watching. And uh, we appreciate you all. And best of luck at the Breeders' Cup. We will see you there.